Good morning to everyone. Morning. And a big warm welcome to each one of you and anyone who might be watching or linked in. And I really hope that we were all able to have that extra snooze in today. I do hope nobody forgot. It was nice, rather nice. <laughs> Very big thank you to Harry who came, has come to play for us this morning. That's so good to hear that music for us. Now the theme for today is living in uncertain times with certainty. I think we can all do with a bit of certainty, can't we? And so I pray that as we worship and hum and hear God's word and take communion together, we will all be encouraged. Now I have the usual notices that I need to read out to you. One extra one is that from today onwards, we're back to four services a month instead of two. So that's an encouragement already, isn't it? Yeah. And we really look forward to seeing you next week as well as now. And because of the continued situation with the coronavirus, we still have to follow the rules set by the Diocese of Exeter. So as I can see, we're all sitting socially distant. Very good. We're all wearing our masks. Excellent, and we need to keep them on, except for those who come up to read or take part in the service. And we are sharing communion this morning, but only the one kind, the bread. So there is that one-way system, you might all know, but those who don't, you have to come up. You will be told when to come up, stretch out your arm really far away from Terry. <laughs> and take your communion and then you need to walk around that way you will be guided so you won't get lost i hope and um at the end of the service we are really asked if you could wait to be told when to leave and the other thing is to please take your little sheets home with you that would be helpful <clears throat> and if you wish to leave a collection there's an envelope on your uh, little seats where you could put it in and then pop it in the wall that would be also very welcome so one last thing obviously is not to stay here chatting but go outside we'll pray for that sunshine to come out at the right moment and we can have that lovely time of fellowship out there so really lovely again to see you all here why don't we start by standing listening to the first hymn Praise my soul, the King of heaven, and hum as loud as you want. <laughs>
So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. And let's prepare before God, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. As we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. So let's have a time of silence as we recall or call to mind our sins. So let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And shall we stand to say the Gloria, which is the certainty of forgiveness. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And this is the colic for today. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to ask Yvonne and Bernard to please come up and read the Epistle and the Gospel reading. Thank you. The Epistle is taken from Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. 
The Gospel this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 24, verse 30 to 35. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Yvonne and Bernard, for that very well-read reading. And now, shall we stand again? You don't have to stand, but if you want to stand, and we're going to hear the following hymn which echoes this last reading of the Gospel. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. What did you think of that? <laughs> when that sign comes and Jesus comes back, the nations will mourn. But what we heard sung there is what we will be doing if we're in Christ. So we just pray. Dear loving Father, we just praise and thank you for the privilege of being your children and for the privilege of knowing your word we just pray now that you'll speak to our hearts and our minds 
that we will take on board what you have given us. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've been ordained 49 years. I've been in churches where dogs and chickens come in. Once a time, a pig came in. All were welcome. But I must say, not in all my wildest dreams had I ever thought I'd be preaching to a mass congregation. <laughs> Because, I mean, just the way that we're sitting, the way that we wear masks, shows the situation we're in. Very uncertain times. COVID-19 has disrupted our lives in so many ways. And not least, trying to stay, state, to stay safe and for the ever-changing rules and regulations that we should follow. Now, uncertainty is a major cause for stress. Uncertainty interrupts our ability to plan for the future. When future is uncertain, it produces fear. And as humans, we have the need to base our lives on what is trustworthy. And today we have two glorious passages from Scripture, which Yvonne and Bernard have read to us, that give us exactly the theme today. Living uncertain times but living with certainty, as they were singing there. A week or so ago, I was struggling to prepare this sermon, and Pancha and I, we were sharing our daily Bible devotional, which we do together, and the reading we had for that particular day was, start from the end. I thought, bingo, thank you, Lord. What a better than getting some certainty about the end of time. And our gospel reading gives us just that. And just to remember it again. At that time, a moment will come, a day will come, and this will happen. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. And all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the sky with great power and glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. The Bible, from one end, sorry, the Bible in both the Old and New Testament have much to say about the end times and Jesus' second coming. Today we only have time for one major truth for us to hold on to. And that comes from our gospel reading. The angels will come and gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. And here we have a major truth, that if we're in Christ, we have the certainty of life after death at the end of time. And Paul fills us in more with some details behind what is on here. He says, when Jesus comes with power and glory, the dead will rise first, and after that those who are still alive will be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And the Apostle John describes what it will be like when we live with the Lord. God will dwell with us, he says in Revelation 21. We will be his people and God himself will be with us as our God. And he will wipe away every tear from our eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be any mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. So the gospel tells us very clearly that all those of us who are in Christ, being alive or dead, will have a glorious eternal future in heaven. How can we be so certain? Well, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, guarantees it. And he says, the heavens and the earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And how can this be possible? How will this happen? Well, our epistle says, in a section a bit before, when we were dead in our sins, God made us alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our indebtedness, 
and he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. So if we are in Christ, although this side of heaven we will continue to be confronted with problems and uncertainties, we will be given strength to live through them. And beyond that we have the absolute certainty of heaven, living with Jesus for all eternity. What a blessing. That's the first point. But so far we have certainty for the end of time. But what about certainty for the here and now? And this is where our epistle reading comes in. As you heard uh, Yvonne reading to us, the epistle starts saying, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved. Well, I'll stop there, because this is such a wonderful introduction. Paul is actually saying that as followers of Jesus, God saw the Colossians, who he directed the letter to, and us as chosen people, holy people, much loved people. Now to cho be chosen is something wonderful. Just think of two lovers who see each other and they choose each other to live together. Oh, I like football. Well, I like looking at it now. I used to play quite a bit, but I can distinctly remember being in a team when there were 15 players and only 11 are going to play. And hearing the moment when they said, Terry, you're taking on number nine. Thank you, I was chosen. Jesus said very plainly that he chose us. Chosen people. He said, you do not chose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit that will last. And Paul says exactly the same. We are God's chosen people. How does that make us feel? But we're not only chosen, it says also that God sees us as holy. Does anyone feel particularly holy here today? We can't ever be holy by our own. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, says the gospel, he and she is a new creation and has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So when we repent from our sins and turn to Jesus for salvation, we are made completely new. We are said to be in Christ. We are reconciled with God and counted as righteous before him, as holy before him. Because Jesus died in our place and our sins were put on his shoulders and his righteousness was given to us. Chosen and holy. And if that's not enough, God says, we are dearly loved. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And that is exactly what he did for us. That is what we're going to be remembering with gratitude as we take communion today. So as chosen, holy and dearly loved people, we do have certainty for God's presence with us. 365, 24, 7. As Paul says, if God is with us, who can be against us? So the question is, how do we respond to this divine love? Paul is writing to the Colossians to teach them how to live their new Christian lives. And he uses an illustration of clothing, saying that as Christians, we have to take off what is bad and we have to put on what is good. So we have to put on or take off and put on. So we go to verse 12 of the epistle, which we already heard and good to go over again. Paul says, now as chosen, holy and much loved people, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. You will notice that each one of those virtues is a characteristic of the character of Jesus Christ. So basically what is Paul saying? He's saying put on the fruit of the Spirit, put on Jesus. And for every virtue we put on there is an action. 
So we have verse 14, sorry, verse 13, which says, as you put those on, now bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. The Colossians were having serious problems in their church and they needed to support and forgive each other. The word there, to bear with each other, doesn't mean to put up with each other, it means to support each other. Then verse 14 takes us to another virtue to put on. Over all these virtues, says Paul, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect harmony. God is love, it's his nature. Three persons, one God. God is love, says John. So we're told not to put on just a romantic love, which is nice to have amongst couples, but it's the agape love. And again, we have that demonstrated in the communion service. No one has greater love than this, said Jesus, than the one who puts down his life for his friends. And that love, if we put it on, is action. And if we put it on, we will have the peace of Christ that will rule in our hearts. Since as members of one body, we are called to peace and be thankful. And this peace of Christ isn't just the absence of violence or bad things. It's the great shalom. It is an overreaching peace of everything perfect. And that is what he wants to give us in uncertain times. He wants to give us his peace so we can put up with what's going on and live through it even though we get disturbed by it. So that is the action for that. And then verse 15 says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. Again, it's a put on. We have to put on scripture in our lives. How can we obey God and know him if we don't read his word daily? and pray over it and apply it to our lives. And that leads us to the final action in verse 16. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So in conclusion, in Christ we have the certainty of eternal life the glory of being with the Lord in heaven forever. In Christ, we have the certainty of his presence with us for every day of our life. And as we live until the end times, with his help, we strive to rid ourselves of all that is bad. And we put on the virtues of Jesus to grow in Christ, to serve in his kingdom. There's an interesting little verse in Paul to Timothy. Timothy was a keen Christian and one of his major helpers. He considered, Paul considered him his spiritual son. And Paul said to Timothy, take hold of eternal life. What does that mean? Does it mean that Timothy didn't have eternal life? No, because he was one of the key Christians. He had eternal life. But one thing is to have it. And the other thing is to take hold of it. And the take hold bit is to grab it, hang on to it, and let it apply to every area of our life. We have eternal life. It's given to us, promised to us by Jesus. But we have to hold on to it and apply it to our lives. And just to finish, one last thing. As Paul says, For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is certainty for which we can praise and thank God. And may we all live up to it. God bless you all. Thank you, Terry. A lot to ponder there, but also to take hold of, right?
wonderful to be able to just take hold of it every single day. And as we think of taking hold, we think of our trust and we think of what we really believe. Let's say the creed together and declare our faith in God. Why don't we stand up to declare our faith and reaffirm our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was put under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so, if you'd like to be seated, and let's pray together. Have a time of lifting up to the Lord what's on our hearts. Dear Father in heaven, as we gather in prayer, may your spirit lift up to you whatever we have on our hearts and intercede for us at these uncertain times. We lift up our world. We think of all those who've lost loved ones, whether through COVID or any other way, and we mourn with them and pray you will comfort them and bring them the certain hope of your resurrection. We pray for the tensions around the world that bring uncertainty and worry. Lord, may your name be glorified amid the chaos. Strengthen those who believe in you to stand up for what is right and just. And may we all be prompt to reach out to those in need. Help this country, we pray. Give wisdom to those who govern and a clear way forward with the pandemic and Brexit. We pray for those who are so anxious about their jobs and their future. Lord, you have all authority in heaven and on earth. We call out to you to help those who are suffering at this time. Thank you for being able to be, for us to be able to be together today. And thank you for those who have worked hard for this to be possible. We put before you the whole Axe Valley Mission community team led by Clive. Grant them extra special grace and strength to carry out your mission. And thank you for each and every one of the Axmouth family and friends, for those who live in this village and surrounds, and for those who have possibly joined us today who may live further away. In a moment of silence, we can lift up to the Lord anyone who is on our heart who we know needs prayer. We, Lord, we pray that you may enlighten each one in their hearts, that they may live with certainty, trusting in you and every promise you hold for them and us. May your spirit of grace abound in our lives, that we may know of your mighty presence at all times and learn to trust you. Thank you for receiving these prayers. Amen. Amen. And now let's have that lovely time of peace together. God is love. And those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so let us offer one another that sign of peace that can't be a hug, I'm afraid, but... Certainly, 
a, a smile with the eyes and a hug like this, and I hug you all from over here, wave. That wonderful peace Jesus said that he gives us far greater than anything we could imagine. It is so important, isn't it, to keep peace. The Lord is here. We lift them. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. And when we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. In the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which was given to you for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of the supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And as the Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I've already broken the bread. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now we have our last hymn, Go Forth and Tell. yours compassionate and kind wonderful words to think about to go out as we leave so may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the certainty of the Lord Jesus take you home and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. I will see you here next week. Yes? yes. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you all.